Trading's class of 2020 and congratulations. Um, I'm actually should say congratulations, doctors. I'm so proud of you all and uh, so sorry we have to do this by video. Um, I want to start off just by saying thank you. Uh, thank you to you and to your families, your parents, your spouses, your siblings and children. Thank you for entrusting QSOM and trusting us to provide you your medical education, your training uh, that's going to enable you to take such good care of your patients. Uh, thank you for allowing us to, to guide and support you during the last four years. Um, usually the dean is, or in this case, the interim dean, is pretty limited in what they're allowed to say uh, at graduation. And, and that's for good reason. Um, usually that time is better spent allowing the keynote speaker to provide their address. And, and you all have a really good treat. Um, with Dr. Helm's address coming up. I've, I've actually watched it twice and, and no surprise, it's, it's excellent. And he has some great words uh, of wisdom and encouragement for all of you. Uh, so I will, I will keep my remarks brief so you can get on uh, to that. Um, I wanna say that you all are a very special class to me. Um, I arrived here towards the end of fall 2015. And so you all are really the first class I got to see move all the way through. Uh, I was able to interview some of you um, and then got to see you at White Coat Ceremony. I even got to do my first QSOM medical mission trip with some of you. Uh, and that was an, a wonderful uh, experience. Got to know many of you probably more than you wanted me to. Um, and I still have the hashtags that we came up with during that trip hanging over my desk. Um, so it, you all are a very special class uh, to me and I was really looking forward to, to uh, sharing uh, the graduation week um, and the graduation ceremony with you and your family to, to really celebrate all your accomplishments uh, and to celebrate the incredible difference you all are going to make um, when you leave us and, and move into your residency training and then move in to practice. You're gonna make such a difference and, and uh, we wanna celebrate that. I hope you're celebrating with your families and friends um, anyway, as you should. Um, as I look back, it's, you, you all have uh, made it through a very challenging and, and rigorous four years. When you think about it, um, you've taken more than a hundred integrated exams, quizzes, and practicals uh, with thousands of questions. Um, you've, you've taken, uh, successfully taken end of rotation exams, um, qualifying exams. Uh, you've done thousands of more questions in preparing for Comlex and some of you for USMLE. Um, you all have uh, done an amazing job in a very difficult and challenging um, interview and match process. For the very first time, we were under a, a single accreditation system and, and there was a lot of concerns about the challenges that would pose to students. But you all um, did an excellent job as we knew you would. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that you all are extremely well-trained and you will do an excellent job in residency and take incredible care of your patients. I expect many of you uh, to end up being chief residents. Uh, no pressure, but that's, uh, that's what history shows us. And, and I, um, I absolutely expect that to be the case. And when it is, you have to let us know about that. Um, you, know, you all have risen above a lot of challenges and achieved a lot of success and you should be very proud of that and, and we are certainly proud of that. Um, you are you are entering medicine at an incredibly critical time um, and an incredibly challenging time. Um, you know COVID-19 has forever changed uh, the practice of medicine, um, is forever changed all aspects of our lives. 
and you're entering medicine at a time where there's substantial need um, from so many patients. Um, and of course, uh, we, we focus on those in rural and underserved regions, but there are, there are patients everywhere that are in, in tremendous need of, of good physicians to take care of them. So you have so many opportunities to touch so many lives right now. There's also, um, the, along with COVID came um, a, a recognition by the public, by lawmakers, by so many of the importance of physicians, um, the importance of a strong healthcare system, and the, the outpouring of support and respect for uh, physicians and for the healthcare team has never been higher. And that creates a lot of opportunities uh, for you all to make an even greater difference. It also comes, comes with that a lot of responsibility to, to live up to that um, and when we do take care of patients. We're gonna have a lot of opportunity um, to make changes in medicine. And I should say you all are gonna have a lot of opportunity to make changes in medicine, the healthcare system uh, that are sorely needed and overdue. You will probably have access to a lot of funding that may not have been there before to support these changes. So again, you're gonna have a lot of opportunities um, moving forward. And you all are really gonna define um, our specialty and our profession in the future. And, and I can honestly say I'm, uh, that's, I'm, I'm very confident in that and comforted by that. You all will do an amazing job. Um, and so when you move forward into this next stage, into your residency training and your practice, remember the simple things. Um, always let your patient guide you. Um, always advocate for your patient and what's in their best interest. When you're with your patients, be present, um, be compassionate, be kind. Um, and I think that goes without saying when we are caring for patients, but you also have to take that approach into your personal lives as well. Medicine is grueling, residency is grueling. Um, and so you have to give yourself some grace. Um, be kind and compassionate to yourselves, to your families, your friends, and your loved ones. Um, uh, you know, think, approach your patients and your lives in a very osteopathic fashion, making sure to take care of body, <clears throat> mind, and spirit. Um, so do that for your patients and do that for yourselves. Um, as we, we move to the end of this, uh, so I can let you get on to, uh, to Dr. Helm and the rest of the celebration, um, I just want to close with, with another thank you. Um, thank you for the special memories you brought all of us, for the joy um, that you all have brought us, for the special class that you are. And I mean that in a good way, not in a bless your heart special kind of way. Um, thank you for uh, the, the, um, the choice you have made to enter a career of service to others. Um, thank you for representing the profession uh, in QSOM so well. Um, I also want to thank once again your parents, your family, your friends, spouses, loved ones. Um, for all the support and encouragement they've provided you, not just over the last four years, but throughout your life. Um, certainly, I know a lot of you would agree that this moment wouldn't have been possible without that. And so I wanna thank them on your behalf uh, and thank them on the behalf of, of QSOM. So as you get ready to, um, you've already left QSOM by the time you've watched this, but as you continue on and move towards residency, don't forget about us. We're here, we'll always be here for you. You'll always be a member of our family. Make sure you keep in touch with us. Keep in touch with each other. Uh, join our alumni uh, group. Uh, be active at QSUM, we want you here. I would love to see uh, you all back here teaching uh, when you're done with your residency. Come back, we want you here. 
Um, please know that we all wish you well, and we know you're going to do an amazing job. But remember, we're always here for you, and we are so proud of you and everything you have done and will do. Y'all, please take care of yourself, and I expect to hear updates from you soon. Class of 2020, I'm so happy to be graduating with all of you. Um, this is a little different than I thought it would be. Uh, this is probably a little different than all of us thought it would be, and not something really any of us saw coming. Um, so, so much for that you know, great 2020 vision to the future. Um, but we're here, and we made it. And what is always 2020 vision is hindsight. And I have the opportunity today to reflect a little bit on where we've been as a class um, as we jump into our lives as doctors, which we start right now. Um, the thing that most stands out to me is just the amount of work that each of us has put in over the last four years. I think there's this rhythm, uh, this cycle to medical school that we've all experienced over and over again of staring up at a challenge, of getting through it, and of getting to the end and celebrating uh, that accomplishment. That's, that's happened you know, on the micro level with like, quizzes, with blocks, with rotations. Um, and today it's the, it's the big one, it's the overarching um, you know, we looked up at medical school, we worked through it, and we finished. Um, and that is definitely worth celebrating. And it's different though, because all those micro, you know, celebrations of that, that pattern, we did that together. Um, but today we're kind of scattered all around the country in different situations. And that makes me a little bit sad. And I, I want for us to have still that same sort of connection today. Um, I was really looking forward to seeing all of you guys and being able to say to people that I haven't seen in a while, congratulations, I'm so proud of you, look what you did, uh, you're gonna be great. And so I do hope that we can each uh, connect with people today who, who we've been in contact with, but also maybe people who we haven't been in contact with and, and just say, congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Um, because I think there's a lot of meaning in that uh, with our graduation and I want us to have that as a class. Um, so I hope to be calling some of you today. The first thing that I heard in our lecture hall was uh, Dr. Mahalik. The, th the first thing I remember, at least, was Dr. Mahalik talking about our curriculum. And in that context, I think this was an orientation, he said this, this idea, um, which is, you don't know what you don't know. And that has come back to me over and over and over again in medical school. Probably the most true thing. I remember first year uh, finishing a couple blocks and thinking like, wow, I know a lot of stuff. But then hearing the conversations people ahead of me were having, recognizing, wow, there is still so much that I don't know, that I really need to know in order to be a doctor. Um, and that has not changed. I'm, we're constantly hearing of, of more information that we need to know that we don't have yet. And I think that probably will continue throughout our careers. There is this quote in uh, David Foster Wallace's Infinite Jest, which I really wrestled with for a while. The quote is, the man who knows his limits has none. And and as much as I, I don't think anyone has no limits, I think he's being a little bit hyperbolic, I do think that the core of this idea is the same as Dr. Mahalik's quote, um, in that we are most limited by our lack of knowledge about what our limitations are. And medical school has been a tremendous privilege for all of us to identify what our limits are, um, and then to have the resources to work past those, to move the goalpost a bit, to identify a weakness and be able to turn it into a strength. Uh, with mentorship and support and guidance. And I want to acknowledge today um, the hard work that it took to do that, but also the amount of guidance and mentorship and nourishment that got us through this uh, in order to come out on top, uh, to become better and more competent and more capable uh, through facing challenges and staring down our weaknesses. Um, it's kind of a tricky time for, for me I, to, to be celebrating. I think I, I really wrestled with that as well. Just how do I um, just exuberantly celebrate my accomplishments and our accomplishments while also, I think, honoring that this is a hard time for so many of us. This is a hard time for our nation, uh, a time that doesn't necessarily lend itself well to just throwing a great big party. And I do think that it's important that we do both today, um, that we celebrate what we've done and that we also acknowledge that this is a hard time and it's not perfect. I think that our graduation are, is a celebration of us jumping into careers as people who will be entering situations that are tricky. Um, people who will be treating diseases that are heartbreaking. 
um, and handling situations that are sad. And so I don't think this is a tension that will necessarily go away. Um, but I do want for us to really celebrate today just where we are and uh, where we've been. There is a poem that I wanted to share with you guys that's really meant a lot for me in the context of gratitude and celebration in the midst of situations that are not perfect. So I wanted to share that now. Listen, with the night falling, we are saying thank you. We are stopping on the bridges to bow from the railings. We are running out of the glass rooms with our mouths full of food to look at the sky and say thank you. We are standing by the water, thanking it, standing by the windows, looking out in our directions. Back from a series of hospitals, back from a mugging, after funerals, we are saying thank you. After the news of the dead, whether or not we knew them, we are saying thank you. Over telephones, we are saying thank you. In doorways and in the backs of cars and in elevators, remembering wars and the police at the door and the beatings on stairs, we are saying thank you. In the banks, we are saying thank you. In the faces of the officials and of those who will never change, we go on saying thank you, thank you. With the death around us, with our lost feelings, we are saying thank you. With the forests falling faster than the minutes of our lives, we are saying thank you. With the words going out like cells of a brain, with the cities growing over us, we are saying thank you faster and faster. With nobody listening, we are saying thank you. We are saying thank you and waving, dark though it is. So class of 2020, thank you. It has been a tremendous privilege to be your class president. May we all go out and continue to push the edges of our limitations that we may do the most for those around us with gratitude and humility. Congratulations. Class of 2020, congratulations. Today we celebrate years of hard work, studying, labs, rotations, interviews, and stress. We celebrate friends and colleagues, professors and preceptors, parents and significant others. We celebrate the end and a new beginning. It's ironic that at this time, the medical profession is more taxed, more stressed, and more cherished than it's ever been. And it's dawning to enter this world. We have a responsibility to our patients and our profession, but we're also young adults with a calling, not just to medicine, but beyond. Let's take our skills and talents and turn the world into a place that we want it to be. Reflecting on our time together, we've had our fair share of challenges. From late night studying anatomy, where on the practical it looked nothing like what we've seen, and inexplicable lecture hall temperatures. We've also had demanding clinical work and grueling hours, complex medicine and surgery, and difficult conversations with patients, each other, and even ourselves. But we got through it all together, and with a little help from our friends. No matter what came up, there was always someone to turn to for help. A good friend who knew anatomy, a classmate willing to share notes, a reassuring group chat, relaxing carpool, friendly soccer matches. There was always someone ready with a quick joke, a listening ear, and someone to stand up and help however they could. And I'm proud of that. And now, as our time together draws to a close, we turn to the future. We're set to graduate from medical student to physician. And we're left with a strange paradox. This paradox of graduation and the concept of the perpetual student. As we graduate, we may no longer be students in name, but this is certainly an illusion. We're now tasked with living as perpetual students of medicine in order to reach our greatest potential. As we enter residency, we'll sharpen our skills and expand our knowledge, despite how much we already know. We'll realize that we never know as much as we want to know, and we'll find ourselves participating in a dynamic environment with a steep learning curve. Over the past few years, we've learned a lot of high yield material, and we've forgotten plenty of it as well. But we've learned how to recognize patterns and ask questions and think through every obstacle that's come our way thus far. And now we've reached a new set of obstacles. The traits that made us successful and made us inspire each other will continue to serve us and our patients. Now, what I've said about our accomplishments and our responsibilities have an air of seriousness to them. So I want to leave you with a reminder to be joyful in what you do. Be grateful for the opportunities you had. Take a minute to enjoy your personal pursuits. Find your sense of joy and cultivate it. Take care of yourself as much as you care for each other and for your patients. Reach for what makes you happy and keep it alive and well. I'm proud of each of us. Good luck with everything you set out to do. And always remember that your peers care about you and will always be there for you. Congratulations, class of 2020. Or should I say doctors?
Hey guys, as you can tell, I had to make a decision this morning on which outfit and hat to wear. It wasn't my original choice for your big day, but it looks like a Campbell t-shirt, jeans, and my Tilly hat wins this time. I'm so, so happy to talk to you today. I'm sorry we can't be together. I want to shake your hands. I want to hug each of you and give you a lint chocolate truffle, but I just can't. For now, I'll just have to eat up the 180 truffles that I wanted to hand out to each of you on stage. I have to share with you how thrilled I was to get a phone call from Dr. Powers asking me to deliver the commencement address for your class. I was absolutely thrilled. After hanging up the phone, I just cried. Uh, uh, you guys are so important to me and I feel so incredibly blessed to share with you your final moments as medical students and offer you some last thoughts. A week after Dr. Powers called me, I started to put my thoughts together and tried to create something for you that was meaningful, outstanding and memorable. I spent a week in Aruba with my wife and we created and refined my address. I was so excited about commencement and Aruba was pretty cool too. Then this COVID-19 challenge comes along and has certainly thrown a tough blow to our lives and to our your commencement plans. Last week I thought I need to change my talk. I decided today, despite how COVID-19 has changed us as people, changed us as physicians and changed our society as a whole, I decided that I wanted to deliver to you the exact same message that I planned this winter. We will get back to an environment where my kind of old fashioned medicine that I talk about survives. The handshake has been a custom for most societies for many millions of years. One year without it won't make it go away forever. It will come back, trust me. So keeping that in mind when you listen to my original address, that we will overcome this thing, think of me when you have your next piece of chocolate and be sure to share a piece with someone else. I offer you my original message. Remember, be good to each other. Hi everyone. First, I think you, my audience, deserve to know that my commencement address today will be a finite experience. It is well known in the world of public speaking that there is no pleasure a speaker can give an audience that compares to the pleasure they get when the speaker's talk is over. So you can look forward to experiencing that great pleasure exactly 14 minutes from now. I'd like to start by setting some ground rules for my presentation. Rule number one, I need to be brutally honest with you in what it means for me to have been asked to address your graduating class on your special day. This is for me to get me through the rest of this presentation. I wasn't born in North Carolina, but I'd say the 25 years my wife Kathy and I spent raising our family here allows me to rightfully say thank y'all for this chance to share a few final thoughts as you take what you have learned these last few years to share with the rest of the world. You asked for it, one last debrief session with Dr. Helm. Rule number two is a familiar rule for our graduates. For those 
here that don't know the 14 minute patient encounter followed by a nine minute period for completing documentation of the encounter. We called it the 14-9, was a very regimented simulated format in which our faculty team endlessly trained today's new physicians to hone their communication skills. What is essentially the art of medicine and to hone their clinical examination skills in dealing with patients in an environment typical of a doctor's office. It was sandwiched with specific recorded announcements of a start time, an end time, and the infamous two minute warning announcement when stress levels rose considerably. If you think about it, a doctor-patient interaction will often last about 14 minutes, so it's kind of uh, logical. As a result, each of our medical graduates today, every single one of them, successfully passed their 12 case back-to-back-to-back 14-9 timed videotaped patient encounters as part of their national medical licensing exams. Your class's first time pass rate for this exam was one of the top of all medical schools in the US. I am so very, very proud of you. One of the imprints I've probably had on almost all of you is this training of the 14-9 patient encounter. I was blessed along with the rest of your clinical skills faculty to influence you in some way over the last four years. And hopefully, There were things well beyond the 14 minute patient encounter that I've pushed on you that you will take forward with you on your professional journeys. This brings me to rule number three. In expect to keep my talk under 14 minutes today, and in return, I expect nine minutes of roaring thunderous applause from my audience. Thank you. I tend to remember first days so well, my first day of medical school, my residency, first day of marriage, first day of my kids' lives, and in fact, your first day at QSOM. During that that time, your phenomenal sim team acted out a fun simulation uh, patient encounter with the results of a vaginal delivery of a newborn that two of you performed with the assistance of Mr. Mann followed by two more of you resuscitating that newborn with the doctor man. It was a way to share with you a little of what you were in for in experiential learning at Campbell. Within the first few weeks of medical school, we provided you a specific scripted outline, a formula for conducting a patient encounter that was completely foreign to most of you. And when you first tried applying it to a real patient in the Sim Center, nearly every one of you felt overwhelmed with what you shared with me as a daunting and nearly impossible task of just getting a patient history completed in the allotted 14 minutes, let alone what you were later incorporating into that same 14 minute encounter to include physical examination, counseling, osteopathic principles, a discussion of the diagnosis, and a review of a plan for the patient. MSBS graduates that are going on to professional school, watch out, it's all coming your way next. Every one of our new physicians here today can now complete such a full patient encounter in their sleep. During those first weeks of medical school, we created a canvas for you to start to paint, to discover your own art of medicine and how you communicate with patients. You've already started your careers with a focus on your individual art of medicine through these tools. So I remind you today of a few of those tools. Number one, knock gently on the exam room door as to not startle your patient. Number two, make eye contact. Really make eye contact. Three, smile appropriately. Sometimes with a subtle supportive smile in the midst of delivering bad news to a patient and a more giddy smile to empower patients 
by celebrating their success at accomplishing a goal, such as quitting smoking. Four, shake hands. Connect with patients, touch patients. You are osteopathic physicians, you have your hands. And the impact of making physical contact with patients is vital. Sometimes the handshake is best to be firm, sometimes as with the very elderly more dainty. Always remember to adjust your handshake. Number five, sit with patients. Always get at their level and square up to them to give them your undivided attention. Adjust the doctor's stool to the perfect height. You don't wanna talk down to patients. You wanna be at their level both physically and figuratively. As a pediatrician, I wore out the knees on my pants by kneeling over to get to the same level as my four-year-old patients. So I wasn't looking down or talking down to them. Number six, show empathy. The I'm sorry to hear that phrase that I hope has become second nature for you really does the trick. It is simple, it is effective. It does help you open your heart to really caring. And that is exactly what is at the core of our profession. My patients and families that I cared for for over 30 years really don't remember that I chose the right antibiotic for them or really care about the choice of blood pressure medications that might be the best match for their clinical presentation. What they care about and cared about and what they remember me for is how I treated them, how I respected them, how I listened, how I was with them through their illness the good times of celebrating their remission and the tough times when they face the reality of their mortality and that of a loved one. Remember, it's so much more about how you say things, not necessarily what you say. Number seven, examine patients directly on the skin. Heal and nurture with your touch. I've shared with you, many of you, my shirts versus skins example. Like back in my early school days, with games of basketball, some of us would take our shirts off as a team and be the skins, while the opposing team would keep their shirts on and be the shirts. I offer to you that in medicine, there are physicians that are shirts and physicians that are skins. The shirts do a cursory examination of the patient, listening with their stethoscope placed on top of the blouse or the gown. They pay more attention to the monitors uh, that the patient is connected to than they do the patient themselves. They are missing the boat and they are often sloppy. Team skins, remember, on the other hand, are clinicians that listen with their stethoscopes placed directly on the skin. They give priority to the examining of the patient. The chest wall, the pulses, the lymph nodes, all with great detail and precision and true attention. They look at patients in their eyes. They really look. They are doctors that are truly in the moment. So remember that some of your attending physicians that, I have, uh, that, that have taught you, some that will teach you in the future, are unfortunate to be on team shirts. You need to be on team skins. Remember, no credit for listening over clothing. Go team skins. Number eight, Seek input from patients and offer options. This is the starting of the negotiation process. Be fair with your patients. Not everyone can do everything you'd like to offer to them. Work through their priorities and your priorities to come to a mutually agreed upon plan. Number nine, be thankful to patients. Thank patients for their time. Don't wait for them to thank you for yours. And number 10, finally, shake hands upon saying goodbye. And remember, don't ever forget to protect your next patient by washing your hands at the end of your encounter. Continue to paint your canvas, your canvas, that shows your art of medicine. On this special day, really it's yours. There's no more paint by the numbers after today. Today, you get a brand new canvas. In the medical professional and leadership course I've shared with you, we've talked about what leadership is, influencing others for positive outcomes. Now with two years of clinical work behind you, 
you can more clearly understand the importance of how the most effective physicians influence others and how important it is in particular to lead your teams and lead your patients. The principles of truly great leaders that we focused on were honesty, character, and selfless service to others. And although I mentioned being selfless in your leadership, that does not mean to be careless in helping yourself. You do not need to be completely selfless. You do need to be selfish in creating time for yourself to relax, to recover, to pray, to exercise, meditate, be with family and friends, all of the things that replenish us. If you're not healthy as a physician, you cannot help those who need and depend on you. If you are not selfish enough to save time to care for and nourish yourself, you will get sick and you will be able to serve no one. Replenish your souls often. Always work towards setting the example of health for your patient. So think about it. There is so much that you can do now, today, in 14 minutes that four years ago was a daunting and nearly impossible task. You've made huge strides in your skills, tremendously huge. So allow the process you've learned for patient encounters to spill over into your lives with the people that share this day with you with your spouse, with your family, with your friends, and even with strangers you encounter in life. To graduates of both programs today, knock gently in life. Look at people in their eyes, really look at them. Smile more, shake hands and hug more. Seek opinions of others, create options in life, and be thankful, thankful and forever grateful for the poker hand that God has dealt you in this life. Four of a kind, a straight flush, a full house of opportunity that you've been given, a great hand that includes a wonderful friends and family group to support and guide you, brains and intellect to learn and eagerness to serve, and a heart to share with your patients and an education at Campbell University. The chances of any one person in this world of being dealt that kind of hand is about one in 600 million. So be grateful that you are the ones that beat the odds. Be open to sharing this gratitude regularly and repeatedly with your spouse, with your family, with your friends. Really look at them in their eyes, hug them often, Smile with them more. Show them your gratitude and pay it forward. Going forward in your careers and in your lives in general, you will continue to face the challenges of many new 14 minute encounters that represent daunting and nearly impossible tasks. Know that you can do it. You can accomplish much, much more than you ever imagined. Just take life in 14 minute chunks, hone your skills, and join me on Team Skins. Today, on this special day, it's all about you. So congratulations. Tomorrow and for every day thereafter, don't make it ever about you and you'll be superstars.
It is our pleasure and honor to introduce the Campbell University Jerry M. Wallace School of Osteopathic Medicine Class of 2020 graduates. Dr. Kyle Admire. Dr. Babar Khan Afridi. Dr. Roxana Aguili. Dr. Riyad Al Sabah. Dr. Natalie Alcott. Dr. Amar Wael Arafat. Dr. Laura Alana Barbalado. Dr. John Francis Benicki. Dr. Lauren Veronica Benning. Dr. Daniel Choi Benson. Dr. Benjamin W. Benzing. Dr. Danius Bouye. Dr. Logan Elizabeth Briel. Dr. Lucas Benjamin Brogdon. Dr. Julia Anna Pico Brogdon. Dr. Zachary Dace Brooks. Dr. Tia Renee Bunker. Dr. Miles Campbell. Dr. Ryan Kent Card. Dr. Wes Carter. Dr. Jared Cassell. Dr. Ashley Nicole Cheek. Dr. Brianna Elizabeth Chu. Dr. Derek Tyler Clare. Dr. Benjamin Nicholas Coe. Dr. Grant Collins. Dr. Brian Connor. Dr. Emily Jean Cox. Dr. Alana Marie D'Amelio. Dr. Timothy Michael Darden. Dr. Alexis Jade Davis. Dr. Jeffrey Dean Davis. Dr. Katia De La Torre. Dr. Eric Deloso. Dr. Francesca Malloy Devine. Dr. Elizabeth Dixon. Dr. Sarah Elizabeth Dole. Dr. Melissa Duje. Dr. Adam Duca. Dr. Jared Michael Dupree. Dr. Jacob Robert Erfurth. Dr. TJ Escalante.
Dr. Arewumi Zainab Falahan. Dr. Charlotte Reagan Fawcett. Dr. Jared Vincent Balaspas Fernandez. Dr. Christopher Michael Ferrante. Dr. Andrew Spencer Finneran. Dr. Aaron Fredrickson. Dr. Veronica Garber. Dr. Devin Godek. Dr. Luke Gardner Godwin. Dr. Brian Thomas Gorman. Dr. Robert Lewis Gratton. Dr. Alicia Carol Green. Dr. Malie Elizabeth Groth. Dr. Jackson Taylor Walker Helms. Dr. Alex Quinton Herring. Dr. Eric Hexum. Dr. R. Dylan Hill. Dr. David Ho. Dr. Layla Sithi Hussein. Dr. Shahab Foyz Imam. Dr. Mary Elias Ivashevsky. Dr. Jeswin Jacob. Dr. Julian Jaberail. Dr. Kaylee Jernigan. Dr. Casey Lynn Hunko. Dr. Thurston Callis. Dr. Esther G. Hoon Kim. Dr. Giles Thomas Knowles. Dr. Renaud Srivatsav, Commander. Dr. Megan Nicole Kummerlow. Dr. Sarah Grace Kwiatkowski. Dr. Kaiser Lom. Dr. Matthew John Leary. Dr. Jonathan Bo Lillenquist. Dr. Taylor Love. Dr. Nicholas Louis Louisbel. Dr. Ryan Mashili. Dr. Alyssa McKay. Dr. Fatima Chima Malik. Dr. Bailey Maloney. Dr. John Peter Manor. Dr. Jenny Mao. Dr. Curtis Marino. 
Dr. David Eugene Marcellus, Dr. Melissa Ann Marvin, Dr. Zachary Ryan Morrow, Dr. Courtney McCoy, Dr. Kiefer James Mespelt, Dr. Ani Manatsakanyan, Dr. Benjamin Thomas Moyer, Dr. Raymond Mulcahy, Dr. James Thomas Muller, Dr. Joseph Alexander Lauro Murphy, Dr. Justine Hammond Murphy, Dr. Stephen C. Music, Dr. Robert Charles Nallenweg, Dr. Joshua Alexander Narden, Dr. Danielle Ashlyn Nesbitt, Dr. Vanessa Fung Nguyen, Dr. Chinuary Naiji, Dr. Jessica Lauren Oshab, Dr. Sharon Olang, Dr. Michelle Orlowski, Dr. Amish Parikh, Dr. Brandon Michael Parr, Dr. Kishan Dinesh Patel, Dr. Priyanka Sunil Patel, Dr. Jacob Mitchell Pierce, Dr. Nicholas Carneal Petri, Dr. Matthew Posada, Dr. William Zachary Poston, Dr. Karim Ibrahim Casey, Dr. Andrew Reed, Dr. Kaylee Ann Ramin, Dr. Taylor Renbarger, Dr. Victoria Rice, Dr. Haley Danielle Sari, Dr. Ahmed Bassam Salem, Dr. Chaitanya Sambangi, Dr. Brian Schiffman, Dr. Joshua Brian Seidel, Dr. Hima Shah, Dr. Vishwa Mahesh Shah, Dr. Nina Shander, Dr. Chase A. Sherman, Dr. Joshua Shirley, 
Dr. Cameron Gregory Smith. Dr. Kara Ann Smith. Dr. Jessica Sohn. Dr. Severo Stefan Spradling. Dr. Crisos D. Spiratos. Dr. Joseph Matthias Stallings. Dr. Cooper Lewis Stone. Dr. Harrison Sun. Dr. Benjamin Tan. Dr. Jenna Tatham. Dr. Nigel Thomas Thymoreal. Dr. Paul Cardenas Tanag. Dr. Thomas Clifford Turner. Dr. Jackson Vallely. Dr. Jacques Maurice Villian. Dr. Christopher Walker. Dr. Robert Landon Wallace. Dr. Ryan Lee Wellborn. Dr. Katherine Worshing. Dr. David Woodfield. Dr. Peng Yin. Dr. Travis Young. Dr. Gary Schuyler Zimmer III. Dr. Michael Zimmerman. Thank you and congratulations. We wish you all the best in your residencies and your future careers. Hey guys, I hate that we aren't all together to celebrate everything that we have achieved, but know that we'll get together eventually. I want to say congratulations because we're officially done. I want you to think back to where we started two years ago. And I know that as I reflect, I think about everything that we've done and oh my gosh, was it a lot. I think about all the late nights and early mornings spent studying Levine. I think about the thousands of Anki or Quizlets that were made. I think about rushing to try to snag a study room before they were all gone. And I also think about the trips to see Miss Henderson or Miss Daly to get a piece of candy, a hug, or sometimes just words of encouragement. I also want you to think about, think back to all the things that you've sacrificed to get here. And I want you to know that it was all worth it. According to the Census Bureau, only about 13.1% of Americans have a master's degree or higher, and we're part of that statistic now. I want you to know that that's something to be very proud of. Only 13.1% of Americans can say that. I'm not sure what the p-value is, but I know that it's statistically significant. Now, sadly, our time together as a class of 2020 has come to an end. As everyone heads their separate ways, I hope that you take pride in how far you have come and have faith in how far you will go. Our class has always been unique and has showed resilience and sheer determination no matter what has been thrown our way. I want to leave you with one of my favorite quotes that I feel is fitting for our group, for the way that COVID has interrupted our last semester, and just for life in general. To achieve, stop talking about it and start getting it done. To achieve, stop seeing every obstacle as an excuse and start seeing those obstacles as a pathway to your goal. 
Having completed this rigorous program has given each and every one of us some very sturdy stones that we may find ourselves needing to stand on later on in life. Remember that as you continue down your path, there will be plenty of excuses to stop, plenty of reasons to quit, and plenty of times that you feel like giving up. But don't. Take this path that we've worked so hard over the last two years to build and don't stop building it until you've reached your goal. Once you've reached your goal, start another path and keep going. Don't ever stop having goals or dreams for yourself and keep building those paths one step, one obstacle, and one day at a time. Please know that I'm extremely thankful that our paths have crossed here in Little Bowie's Creek. I can't wait to see the different directions that we all go and I wish everyone the best of luck and I hope that our paths cross again one day soon. And with that, MSBS Class of 2020, congratulations. We're officially camels for life. We did it. MSBS Class of 2020. First of all, I would like to say congratulations for completing your master's degree. You have all worked extremely hard and have been diligent through hurricanes and pandemics to complete what you started. Each of you possess a great work ethic and watching everyone push toward a goal together was encouraging and motivating. I can honestly say that I have confidence that each one of you will be successful in whatever you put your mind to just as you were in the MSBS program. As we graduate and go our separate ways, always remember the values that you have learned during this program and the friends that you have walked alongside throughout this step of your journey. I wish all of you the best of luck as you continue on your journey to pursue your calling. I am thankful for each of you and I'm excited to see what our class will accomplish in the years to come. Congratulations. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce the Campbell University Class of 2020 Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences graduates. Rhoda Ajay Boateng. Emily Burchette. Andrew Brian Carter. Abigail Roxanne Daniels. Stephen Adam Duville. Charday Francis Martin. Sweta Gupta. Camden Hall. Chelsea Hudson McRae. Sabina Jamal. Molly Margaret Kearney. Stephen Michael Kerr. Gan Lu. Melody Lynn Moore. Megan Nunnally. Darshan Vito Chandra Patel. Brady Scott Pickett. Jonathan Michael Reamer. Clotilde Robinson. Sarah Ann Spence. Victoria Whitfield. Emmanuel Renee Yagney. Thank you and congratulations to all the graduates. I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors.